big time. On today's episode of Big Time, the podcast, brought to you by BJ's Tavern in beautiful Fort Kent, Maine. We got our guest who's probably been going to BJ's for the longest, actually. Well, no, Lex, Lex is the OG. So maybe he's been going there the second longest amount of time. Today we're joined by the patriarch of House Bard, the true warden of the North when it comes to Northern Maine basketball, the man, the myth, the legend, my father, Joey Bard on today's episode of Big Time. Let's rock. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, another round of this uh, fucking fantastic show. We call it Big Time. Big Time episode, so big. I got uh, a veteran from season one, Charlito in the building. Yo, I'm back in the booth. What's up, everybody? It's going to be good. Yeah. So, I think we're showing some favoritism because this is the third bard we've had on the show here. Yeah, Joey Bard in the building here yeah, on Big Time. And uh, I don't know what's in store here. We're just gonna kind of freeball it. Unless, Charles, do you have something you wanna ask right off the bat, or? Hmm, who's your favorite son? <laughs> who's your favorite oldest son? <laughs> 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 Enough said. Yeah. So we're just gonna get into it. Dad's a perfect guest because he's basically the leave, living, breathing uh, encyclopedia and historian of pickup basketball in the Valley. So I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of name drops today. Before we get into it, Dad, what are you sipping on tonight for the uh, for the episode? Well, Corona Light. Corona Light with a lime. Yes, sir. Charles, what do you got? Uh, this is number thirteen vodka <laughs> tonic here of the day, so I could get a little sloppy here, but no, I, was, I actually switched it up. It's uh, Tangeray and some pink lemonade. Gotta love the pink. That's big time, isn't it? Isn't that what you called it on your it's episode? No, the last one was not so incredible hot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's just get into it, Dad. Four Kent, born and raised, correct? Correct. What, uh, what neck of the woods? Pleasant Street. All right. Was there a Pleasant Street gang growing up? Sure. All right. There was gangs and Mark between Market and Pleasant Street. Rock fights at the uh, railroad <laughs> bridge. Oh boy. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of casualties there. A lot of blood. Who was uh, who was in the Pleasant Street gang? Who did you grow up with? The. Uh, it's, you, you never saw that, but that street was wild when we were kids because every house had, every house had at least, you know, we were like the smallest family with four kids. Uh, you go down the street, the Bouchards had four kids, the Plords had six kids, Sylvains had six kids, the Nettos had five kids, the Pelletiers had eight kids, Parodies had five kids, uh, the Rosses had five or six. Uh, you just kept going down, and it's this big family after big family, all the way down. Every night there was there was something going on. What about that skinny like assy kid carrying the assy? <laughs> he wasn't there then. Oh, just a little pipsqueak. <laughs> yeah, no, he wasn't there then. They didn't grow up on that street. They, they they were there after. What were you guys getting into for fun? You mentioned rock fights, but uh, baseball. Oh. it was a uh, baseball field in the back of the. There used to be a uh, a boat and uh, recreation uh, dealership. Right where, um, where the, the 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 athletic director for the college, Ashby. Okay, Ashby. That house, that man used to own a business, and up in back of that was this big wood structure, and he sold boats and motors and stuff out of that. Mm -hmm. So right in back of that, we kept the field mode and we played baseball there. And um, this at this time, the elementary school isn't where it currently is, right? No. Well, in the elementary school, we were the first. Uh, we were winning there in fourth grade. It was built in 1969, so we were kids. We were playing in that, play hide and seek in the in the in the construction. Yeah, that was fun. Um, so you went to school with nuns then, growing up. Yes, we did. Did they put the fear of God in you? They sure did. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyone in particular that sticks out for me? It's Miss Grindle. She still scares me to this day. That's the teacher that scared me. She's pretty much like a nun. But uh, yeah, anyone? No, it's, it's funny, like that. You 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 think about them and they. they they're scared, but we went back after we had high school, and they were nice ladies. We just, so they just they were pretending. So maybe we just had it coming. 
Well, what was the worst punishment that you'd ever uh, received or witnessed somebody else receiving? I made the mistake of commenting how the, like, the, like you had different sized desks in the class. And I made the mistake one day of because all the girls had the bigger desk. The tall girls in our class had big desks, and I was at a small desk. The freaking thing didn't even hit the ground. The, the front legs were up off the ground with my knees underneath it. I made the mistake of saying something. So Sister Julie had me go to the back of the class, and you know the center blocks. Yeah. You had to touch your nose up to the. You, you stand at the wall, and the line above where your nose got up to, you had to touch your nose up to that block. Wow. Up to that line of, of brick, <laughs> and stay there. How long? Yeah, I tell you, you couldn't anymore. I guess I don't remember. I just remember having to do that. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> they just don't do it like that anymore. It's just not nah, the same. It's not the same. Luckily, with the size of your nose, you had a couple inches. Yeah. To work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what happened when you got home after school? If you got in trouble, what was uh, Pepe like? Was it more trouble at home or? Pepe was in the woods. I didn't see Pepe for weeks at a time. Sometimes. Yeah, Mame yeah. though, she's not very happy. If uh, no, it never got home. You didn't get in trouble enough to get home. Yeah, it was worse. It would have been worse at home than it was at school. So. Yeah, it's not like it is now. Was she an enforcer though? Was she pretty strict? Uh, very hard. Yeah. No. Not at all. No. Huh? I can tell you some stories off camera here, so <laughs> off, off screen. What about what about what big what the big brothers, Rocky and Roland? What were they like? Were they were you guys hanging out? Or was it too much of an age gap right there? That was an age difference. So I mean, they were gone. Uh, Roland was gone. The Marines, sixty nine, so fourth grade he left. Uh, graduation he went in the Marines, and then Rocky too had left and went to Connecticut for a while. Came back. Uh, you know, they're around, but not not a lot. How many years between you guys? Eight. And then we got Rosemary in the middle. Yeah, four years. What was it like having uh, Miss Maine as your sister? It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool with her, too. I mean, once she graduated from high school, that's it. She never came back until yeah. just recently. Yeah, that's so. true. Mm -hmm. uh, so when did uh, athletics come into play? Because I feel like you were the only athlete in the family, right, pretty much? Rosemary was. Oh, really? Same thing. I think she, she got in high school towards the end of it. She got into basketball. And eighth grade, she said, you know, you should try out for basketball. Uh, you're pretty tall, you'd probably be pretty good. So I'd never seen a basketball yet, eighth grade year. So I, uh, I did. Yeah. And then the first few weeks of uh, being on the team, we were on the Hawks team. Uh, first few weeks, I ended up in a leg cast. Uh, Osgood Slatter's disease. Mm. Did I ever tell you this story? Yeah. Yeah. Explain to the listeners what Osgood Osgood Slatter's is when you got a deposit right at the knee. Uh, instead of the calcium going and making your bones go bigger, it kind of just goes at the knee. So what they do is, uh, you know, that, that, right, that leg is retarded, so what they do is they put a cast on the other leg to slow it down so that you don't end up with one leg shorter than the other. Problem was, they did that, they kept it in a cast for about four weeks, took it out, and then you know how your leg gets small when you're in a cast, and you guys never had cast, but anyway, mm -hmm. your leg gets real tiny, all your muscle mass goes away and stuff, and uh, they took it out, and then the other one stopped growing. Uh, I was, I thought it was good. So they put the cast in the other one. So I ended up in cast for eight weeks. So uh -huh. I missed eighth grade. Uh, yeah. I, I did make it back in time for the All Star game, and Louis Morrow uh, got me selected on the All Star team. <laughs> so Louis, Louis, was he just starting at that point, or he, he already been there for a little oh, while? He'd been there for a little while. Yeah. He probably was a 10 year teacher at that point. Yeah. Who but, else was uh, uh, Who else was coaching at that point? Oh, uh, Jimmy Joe Marquis uh, was my coach. Yeah. Um, yeah it was. Uh, it was neat. I mean, it was uh, it was sports. Uh, you're a pimple face. You know, you're growing faster than your mother can put uh, pants and, and, and sneakers on your feet. And uh, you're just trying to figure things out. And then you all of a sudden sports and you start making friends and you get to start talking to good looking women in your class. Really? And, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's an attraction. It's true. I didn't eat sports flat. They were all over me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you guys travel around the valley for uh, elementary basketball or like St. Francis, you play Eagle Lake or anything like that? St. Francis, Eagle Lake, uh, each had a team and then we had three teams in four kids, so we were five teams in all. Yeah. Uh, St. Francis was the team to beat that year. I heard Lee Willette was a full grown man in eighth grade. Lee Willette, we thought Lee Willette got off the bus from St. Francis, he had sideburns, he looked like Burt Reynolds, man. <laughs> Yeah, had sideburns out of here and a mustache, and we thought he was the freaking coach getting off the bus. He was mad. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. Was he any good, though? He's the same size he is now in okay. eighth grade. Yeah. The rest of us were just, you know, we didn't hit our growth spurs yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any Martins in the team at that, <laughs> that time? No. Really? Yeah, it was kind of a, because uh, let's see, Arnold would have been 
The Herms didn't play other than Lance. Pete, I don't even know if Pete played. Uh, none of them except Lance. I think Lance and, and uh, Alton, the oldest one, the only two that really played high school ball. Huh. Uh, back then, there was a it, just a jump in ages there. So true. Yeah. yeah. Working on the farm. Yeah. Gary Thibodeau wasn't coaching back then, was he? Gary Thibodeau hasn't been there that long. Or he's probably the same age as you, right? Gary Thibodeau? Yeah. Uh, Gary is uh, a year old in Rosemary, so he would have 72. He's uh, Tommy Pelletier era. Okay. Yeah. Um, Actually, I think he might be a year older than Tom. I don't know. I never saw those guys play. Yeah. I never saw I, I never went to see watch basketball. Yes, you, what, what was like your first like high school game you ever went to go see? Like when you got to high school? No. I, I, like I said, I didn't. Played a few games there in grammar school. We didn't play. Mm -hmm. And then I played soccer that year, too. So Rosemary got me to sign up for soccer, too. So we played soccer. And uh, freshman year playing soccer, I uh, broke my arm in <laughs> two places. Both bones snapped off. So I missed my freshman year playing basketball. That was a bad injury. Uh, and then really didn't start playing basketball until uh, sophomore year. Had uh, uh, Terry Carpenter for, for a JV coach. And everybody knows Terry for soccer. He was the, 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 the soccer. He's, he's what brought soccer to Fort Kent. But he was my JV <coughs> coach. So sophomore year was the first year. Doing a lot of catch-up. Uh, it was kind of neat, though, because I had a lot of catch-up to do. But uh, those guys like uh, Terry Carpenter, uh, Larry Murphy, Pete St. John, um, George Pooler, Remember George Poole? He was a teacher, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a teacher back then. But, yeah. I mean, all these guys in the 40s and 50s, uh, Doc Chassis, uh, Big Bill Plord, oh, all those Bill guys Plord. played ball. <laughs> Fran Berthium. Yeah. Fran Berthium used to, you know, so you go, go to the high school, and those guys let me play. There was no other high school kids playing, but they let me play with them. Yeah. And I, I'm just able to catch up. So oh, this is pickup. This is this like is the, Hackley. This is like the original Hackley. This is Hackley. Get the grammar school. Holy shit! They get out of practice at JV, then come home for supper, go right to the gym and play with them until. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that was great. Before we uh, go too far, though, I just want to go back and touch on something. This whole injury history thing of yours. We know where Sam gets his weakness from now. Fragile. <laughs> Freaking fragile people. <laughs> Tell you, I never had an injury after that. Yeah. Huh? Charles, never, broke, never, you, you were playing through broken noses and stuff. Broken like that. nose, that's all I had. Uh, Chuck Guy, uh, we headbutted. I think he uh, he had life threatening injuries or he collided with the beast. <laughs> I just had a little nose injury. But, <laughs> but that's amazing about injuries because we were playing on tile floors. There's no hardwood floors. We played tile floors uh, at the armory, at the high school, at the grammar school, all the Eagle Lake, St. Francis. That was all tile floors and, and with with con with uh, canvas cons. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't get injuries. What was it? The armory? Like, was that a high school gym at the time, or what was the armory used for? That was where the guards did their their drill and did uh, their, their stuff. Yeah. So there was no like official league or any like. No. Nothing to play so. At the time, too, uh, like I said, I never saw like Tom and Peltier play. I didn't see those guys. High school games, but we used to go watch the college games. Yeah. So we'd go to the, uh, the college didn't have a gym then. The gym was made, uh, came around 76, 76 or 77. My senior, junior or senior year, the, 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 the year they built the, the college gym. So the college always played at the armory. Oh, wow. So Jim Elias, yeah. that's, where, that's where, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you never saw guys dunking at the high school game. You go there, and he's six five and putting them down like crazy. Uh, what an animal! What a beast! And uh -huh. then, yeah, and then the next year after that, uh, seventy seven college team had uh, seventy six with Elias. I, th I think Ralph Givens played uh, Jim Elias his senior year. Ralph Givens was from Florida, a little black guard from Florida, uh, and that's what started it for the university. Because up until then. Uh, they were in the, the league, uh, like, like Hassan League and stuff like that, and they could never compete at that level. Like, I, I never seen them compete at that level anyway, but once those guys started coming in, um, like Ralph Givens the next year, they had a bunch of guys from Florida. They had Ralph Givens, <coughs> Mitch Glenn. Mitch Glenn was like, it could jump through the roof. He was mm -hmm. only about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, but holy cow, I mean, elbows to the rim. Um, and then uh, Ike James, 6'10". I, one eye, he had a glass eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reg, and then uh, Del Botting was a, he's probably about my size, about 6'2", guard from Patton. Uh, so that, that was the team, and man, they were tough. So those are the guys you watched. You, you didn't watch the high school guys before, you were watching the college guys and stuff like that. Well, whenever uh, high school was playing, we were out of, out of town. 
So, uh, like I was a freshman, we didn't get to see those guys play because we were out of town playing, right? Yeah. And then Tom graduated. So my sophomore year, he was already gone. So I never got to watch those guys play. I never saw Gary or Bob or any of those guys play. I got to, I got to play with them after high school, but yeah. not, uh, not during high school. I want to go back and touch on something because I think it went by real, real too quickly when you talk, talked about the original Hack League, the OG Hack League. OG's original gangster for the guys that don't know that. So basically the OG Hack League, Bill Plord. Let's talk about some of these guys here. Fran Berthium, father of uh, season one uh, alum, Lon Berthium. What were some of these guys like back then? I remember like you guys playing Hack League, like Burt, Burt Bushy and these guys, Murph, no shirts on, and big bellies running around being super intense. Is that how it was back then with these yeah. guys? Yeah, that's Bill, it. Bill Plord with no shirt on running Bill around? James. Was Bill Plore like the original big guy to just set screens and shoot threes? Was he that type of guy? Oh, he wasn't physical at all. He'd, he'd just be outside. It was a one-handed shot. It was a one-handed set shot. George Pooler had a two-handed shot. If I remember right, too, I mean, if you ever interview like Larry Murphy, he can straighten you out and all these things. Like, I'm not really sure of the years and uh, Ralph Gibbons era and all that, but Murph would remember all that. But uh, like, like George, uh, supposedly played semi-pro. Right? He was a two-handed set shot. Uh, it was like a Rick Barry kind of shot. Yeah, because like these guys, uh, if they were playing like in the seventies and they were in their forties at that point, that means like they were, they were going through like high school, like in the late forties, like early fifties, when it was still set shots and all this George Mike and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> the game has changed a little bit. Game has changed. Do you have any any questions from this original Hack League shit? Or? Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin with uh, these old timers here. <laughs> Um, where was that Hackley? That was at the grammar school, you said? Yeah, that was the grammar so school. So five on five in that little yeah. gym. How many guys showing up uh, on a daily basis? 15, 20 guys. 15, 20 guys. Yeah. So, huh. Interesting guys go out and party afterwards, or was it, uh, I, no? I, I can't talk about that. <laughs> I was in high school. Oh, that's true, too. Just a young fella. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, that's good. And he, it must have been some fist fights every now and then, too. No. No? No. No, actually, it was call your own, but... They complain about it, but a foul is a foul. And you touch the hands, you touch the arms. That's a foul. Soft. You can't. <laughs> well, it was, it was, the NBA wasn't what it is now. Right. You know, if you, if you, you couldn't ride up anybody, you couldn't put your hand on somebody, you can tag. You couldn't, you couldn't ride somebody's butt with your hand and, and push them around and put, you know, hand on each side of their waist and hold them in place and stuff. Who were like, uh, during that time, who were like the NBA legends? Was there anybody at Hackley trying to be like Dr. J or... <laughs> Who no. Was, no, there was nobody who thought they were a high flyer wannabe. <laughs> no, 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 no. There was no Lance Morns of this era. <laughs> Love you, Lance. Yeah, yeah so the, the good leagues came in uh, later on in the 80s. Uh, we had some good leagues there. That was at the high school. Yeah. Uh, those teams from St. Uh, Francis, Allagash, uh, Matawaska, Fort Kent had quite a few teams. And those were fun leagues. Those were good competition, too. We'll, we'll, we'll get into those a little bit later here. We're going to keep going through the years. But, yeah, Charlie touched on something like uh, if, if guys were trying to be like NBA players at the time. So, like, when was the first time you saw, like, an NBA game on TV or a big-time college basketball on TV? The Celts were on. I yeah. mean, that was local. That, that's all. So, uh, you watched Havlicek and Cowens and those guys? Or were you not watching it at that point? Yeah. You were? Started to. Yeah? Yeah. Tape delay? Was it on late, 11 o'clock at night? or Again, on, on weekends, uh, Saturdays or Sundays. Those are the games I'd watch. I think it was mostly Sundays. You have a favorite player, favorite Celtic when you were growing up? I loved Havlicek. Yeah. I didn't love Havlicek. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit different now. A little bit different now. Uh, so, freshman year, freshman team, I'm guessing. Didn't play. I thought we just. I thought you were saying you're out of town. Oh, yeah, the injury, the injury. My bad. I forgot. Yeah. He's, he's, that's where Sam gets it from. Yeah. Um, sophomore year then. Sophomore year. Yeah. Uh, JV or JV. varsity? JV. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the uh, JV coach? JV coach was Terry Car Carpenter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you had a pretty athletic class that you came up with, right? You had Carl Abbey in your class. Yeah, he was playing varsity that year. Yeah. He made it right off like freshman year. Yeah. Carl did. Any, uh, anyone else that was good from your, uh, your class? Like who were some of the uh, superstar athletes? Carl, we know, is a soccer player. Played basketball as well. Yeah, Carl, like, uh, for soccer, like Carl and Dennis. Dennis Sear was a year older than us, but Dennis was a phenomenal soccer player. He had a friggin' hammer for a foot. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl was finesse, uh, a really good soccer player. We did great in soccer. I mean, our senior year, we, we were runners up. We, we uh, came in first in Eastern Maine. Uh, during the tournament, we lost uh, up here, the finals for Eastern Maine uh, against, uh, I, if I remember right, it was, uh, I think it was the 
was it Ellsworth or Nicomas, man? I don't remember. But anyway, it was, we had uh, like six inches of snow the night before the, the game. Mm. And somebody in their wisdom went and took the town sweeper to the field. They took every blade of grass off the field. <laughs> oh. All the snow, it was glare ice. So there wasn't any control in the game at all. It was just a matter of, uh, I, I remember the goal. Uh, we were on defense and, and a ball was coming in. at the, We had a great goal with uh, Allen, uh, associate. Uh, great. It was, it was coming in hard through all the pack. I saw it deflect off of Drake's head, uh, Drake Jondro. Just touched his head and then it went, it was about two, three feet away from mine. I was going to get it and it just zoomed and went in and that was the only goal of the game. Wow. The, rest, the rest of the game. So we lost. We, we should have. We thought we were winning states because nobody touched us all year. Yeah. Prescott's and Carroll was in. It was not, there was no competition there. Ooh. We were really good. Charles, you ever lose in, in a snowball? What's your record in snowball games? Oh no, they're, they're probably th two and zero oh in a <laughs> snowball game. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, you should ask me for some advice. <laughs> no, I was. Uh, it's definitely a different game playing in the snow, but yeah, it's over yeah. once at worse. Yeah, I like it. Get down, get dirty. Yeah, Cooper, another season one veteran. Yeah, we like the snow. Although his uniforms are always clean. I didn't, <laughs> didn't slide. Didn't no contact with that guy. But. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, soccer, you guys came, kind of came up close a couple times. How about basketball? Do you guys have good basketball teams? Um, we made it to, to Bangor uh, my senior year. The last team to go would have been Tommy's senior year. Um, and then we were the next ones to go. But, yeah, we were a little outmatched because we were Class A. Yeah. Class A back then. <laughs> we shared a room with Brewer, Brewer High School. That's the one thing I remember about the game. They had two guys, 6'10" and each of them must have been 250. Huge, huge guys, right? So we were sharing the same locker room and we were playing uh, Stearns. So right away, there's a little kid from Fort Kent, everybody down at Fort Kent, right? You're there at the auditorium and these guys have to duck their heads down to get into the locker room. Mm -hmm. And they're opening, and you share the locker room, so they're kind of cheering you out as you're going out on the floor, you know? I still remember that. This is yeah. looking at these guys feeling like a little tiny little wow. kid. But the floor was great. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I, that's the only thing I was any good at, really. I, was, I could get, I, I, I could sky. I could go, I go to the rim. Uh, good defense, and I could jump. I was elbows to the rim. When was your first? Hawk. When was your first dunk? Junior year. Charles, when was yours? <laughs> oh, no? Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> but we were playing on towel floors at home, so yeah. when you got in the auditorium, it was a lot of loose boards. Yeah. And big spring. spring. It was kind of sucked in a way, though, because you'd be dribbling the ball, and all of a sudden, boink, the ball was gone. Yeah. But as far as for getting out, unbelievable. Yeah, so uh, what was your what was your Bangor Auditorium experience like? Because had, had you ever been there prior to when you guys played senior year? Or was it your first time in the building? Oh, it was the first time in the building. So kind of like pulling up to the Coliseum, like yeah. Russell Crowe and Gladiator. And oh, all this. man. Just starstruck. Yeah. Yeah, just looking up. Yeah. I was Ooh. talking with uh, Harvey today when we did Harvey's episode, too. And he was talking about you just can't – sorry, Charles, you can't relate to this because you didn't, you didn't make it to Bangor. Not at all. But everything from just like you pull into the back, like the way you go into the building, and then they give you your credentials when you walk in, and like the locker room experience, and actually getting up on the floor and like looking up in the bleachers, can't uh, can't beat it. You got the four camp fans travel well back then. Yeah, it was, it was a good showing. Yeah, it was a good showing. Yeah. Who'd you guys play? We played Stearns. Oh, Stearns, you said yeah. Yeah, and Stearns was a powerhouse back then. Yep. Uh, remember the, the the kid's last name was Baron. He was their big gun and. He did well, but uh, guards had a hard time just getting it up over half court. Yeah, we never really got down. We were three top scorers on my team were uh, like Bobby Parent, um, Pete uh, Johnson, and myself. We all averaged about twenty points a game, and we never got to see the ball too much. Their guards were really fast. Yeah, really, yeah. So was, guards it, were was it a blowout? Oh yeah, yeah, pretty much over pretty before much it started. Blowout. Only yeah. one game in the auditorium. Or? Yeah. Um, the schedule back then too. So you guys were Class A, but it's not like it was like when we came through where it was Prescott and Caribou. There was a bunch of Class A teams in the county at that point, right? So Fort Fairfield, maybe were they uh, Class A? Uh, wasn't Van Buren Class sure. A at some point? I really don't remember, Tom. Yeah, really don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh Limestone? Probably Limestone with Loring Air Force Base at his peak. Yeah, I, I really don't remember. Remember any? Uh, particular Never much of a fan. Uh, I like to play. I've never been much of a fan. Any any gyms that stand out? Like I always like playing in Holton. Like I love the Holton gym. I like Washburn. Really? Yeah. The uh, Quonset. The Quonset. <laughs> we played their one exhibition game. Yeah. I, I fell in love with that building. So everybody's right there. 
we kind of like going to play an out in the Allagash gym. I never played on that floor. Did you guys? You guys didn't play them in high school? No, they're class D. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never been in that building until this winter. Yeah, it's the first time I ever been in that building. But that must have been a cool building to go watch basketball games. It's not, it's not a gym no more though, right? Yeah, Is the gym's still there. Gym's still there. Yeah, really? they don't. They use it for you know it's more public. Uh, you know, municipal building, but uh, you, you go far and they still get their gold balls and the trophy. Nice. It's, it's kind of cool going in there. Yeah. What would you uh, kind of compare it to? Like, what, does it look like kinda anything like else? Washburn. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it'd be real. Uh, More like the Armory, though, am I right? <coughs> the Armory, it's wood fl- hardwood floors. Uh, like the, like I think the, it was hardwood floors. Bleachers, 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 bleachers. Wasn't much for bleachers. I mean, it was very, you, you were very intimate with the, with the fans because yeah. there's only like two or three seats wide on each uh, side, probably. One of those. On stage. Yeah. So, You'd be really intimate. I, your, the fans would be writing in. And you'd be yelling in your ear, I'm sure. Yeah. It must have been awesome to go to those I games. played there for something. Some you kind did? of scrimmage. I don't know if it was a pickup game or a men's league, something, something. But never. All the years I've, I mean, I lived in gyms my whole life. I've never been in that gym before. I thought it was so huh? cool. So impressed. Cool. you have any uh, any particular games that stand out? Do you remember Eric just going off one game? And also, in relation to that, Aunt B, didn't she have a deal with you where she gave you like a quarter for every point you scored or something like that? Yeah, well, we were, you know, poor kid. Uh, Poor kid. We didn't uh, we didn't have much growing up. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we were fed well and we had clothes on our back and all that, but we didn't have money for extras. So, you know, the other friends were snowmobiling or skiing or whatever, and we got, went to the gym. So I hung out at the college gym and the high school gym. I was in the gym all the time. Mm-hmm. So that was what was fun for us. We used to play at uh, Paul Albert's house. Paul used to keep his, his driveway down in a hot top year-round. So we'd play in the back. Uh, Pete Karen and Paul and I would play out back there all the time. What kind of player was Pete Karen? Pete's friggin' dirty. <laughs> he broke my ankle. Uh. <laughs> it's called the crossover. <laughs> so what's it's called the trip. Yeah. <laughs> he may have a different recollection of that, so you may want to talk to him about so that. So what's this story with Aunt B? I never heard this one. Uh, she used to pay me a quarter uh, 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 a basket. So those thirty point games cost us some money. Quarterback then that's like thirteen bucks a basket. Huh? <laughs> I mean, Jesus, she, she, I don't know how much she was making. She's going to be making that much, but uh, that still, I have fond memories of that. That was just, I'm is a real generous person, but yeah, yeah. yeah. What about for footwear? What were you wearing back then? All stars, all stars all the time, or what? Except for my senior year. Senior year, uh, cousin Bob Plord mm-hmm. yeah. uh, fixed me up in Connecticut. He was uh, he was big with uh, uh, a guy at the sports store down there. And cousin Bob had gone to school here at UMFK, so he hitched me up with some Pumas. Oh! I was the only guy in the team that had leather sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> I had a, a green Pumas with uh, the green suede with white stripes for uh, away away games and home games. I had black, uh, white with black stripes. Two pairs Two of pair. shoes. Holy uh, he shit! Had, he hitched me up. I mean, he had a deal down there in Connecticut. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Were they the uh, Clyde Frasers? Were they? Clyde. The, yeah, Clyde the Glides. Clyde. Look those up, Charles. Let's see what. Let's see, it. Yeah. See if they were nice. I think I was the only guy on the team that had leather sneakers for senior year. Where were guys buying shoes back then around here? Um, there was a, what was the name of it? it? was Goldsmiths out of Bangor. You used to buy it as a team. Yeah. So you'd give them the sizes and then they'd get shipped up here. Yeah. But uh, you, you could get Converse locally. I always thought, like Meme used to hit all the sales, right? So I always thought I was a size 13. Uh, turns out I was a size 12, but she used to buy them size 13 because nobody else would buy them at the they're store when they'd go down on sale half price and she'd buy them then. That's still the, that's still the deal now. That's, that's how it is. Yeah. So a Google resulted in no searches found on these Clyde the Fraser sneakers. Pool so Clyde. he's either lying to you listeners or they're just they're really that. old. They, they <laughs> Before pre-date, Google. They predate Google. Look, look at the yearbook. Yeah. 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 Um, so before we uh, talk about post high school here, let's talk about Fort Kent at the time. So you were going to school right around the uh, Centennial, sixty nine. Let's talk history. Let's talk. Let's talk about the Centennial real quick. We don't really get into history at all, but give Charles a little history lesson because he snoozed through those classes. Sure. Centennial was um, a cool event. They had the uh, IGA or Hannaford parking lot. They had set up a log cabin right in the uh, right in the parking lot on on stilts or whatever, but uh, jacked up there, and that was the central headquarters for that. Uh, I just remember being on my banana bike riding around town, <laughs> all the events, had parades, they had uh, um, uh, Keystone Cops, uh, 
fundraiser. They get, they had a, a jail on a uh, on a trailer in back of a, an old old truck, black truck, a Model T, and they go around to businesses and somebody would pay to put you in jail. So as a fundraiser, so they pay five bucks. They go get something like they go to the hospital and get Pete. Uh, uh, they get Pete Sirwa out of out of his office and put him in jail and bring him down. And you have to go. You have to post bonds. So I have to go pay. And it was a fundraiser. That was mostly firemen did that. They had uh, everybody was, had beards. I remember all the, the guys had beards. The old guys had beards. Um, there was all kinds of events with uh, ladies and you know long dresses and the old fashion clothes. And, yeah. yeah. So was this like the hundred year of Fort Kent or? Yes. Okay. Cool. That, that's what a centennial is. I know. I wasn't even sure if it was like the United States. Actually, I mean, that, uh, Columbus. Wooden, I was 1492. You've, you've been in Canada for too long, and you brought up Columbus as they had wooden nickels. Yeah, <laughs> wooden nickels. Wooden nickels. <laughs> okay. I got some in the cellar. Right. Did I show you those? No. Yeah, I got some in the cellar huh? from the Centennial. Are they next to your uh, stack of Playboy collection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden from mom. <clears throat> Another random question: uh, the history of Fort Kent. When was the pool built? When did the pool go into the ground? That one? Yeah, the town pool. I'm not sure. Was that one? Prior? That's not the original one. Where, where was, where's the original pool, or where was it? The original one was okay back. You, you know if you run the track they get back there now? Yep. Where they get the planters? They got a bunch of boxes. With yeah, they plants. used to be like a volleyball court there, right? They used to have okay, a volleyball court there? Yeah. Okay, that, where all those planters are, that was the foundation for the changing rooms. Mm. And then the pool was to the right of that. So it was just a hot top, a hot top bottom. And it started very, very uh, shallow at nothing, and then it came down to eight. Just like uh, the movie The Sandlot, same type of deal, same type of pool. Who was the Wendy Peppercorn of the uh, of your day? Who was the hot lifeguard? Uh, I can't remember. Wendy Peppercorn, guys, go look that up. Trust. Do, do you know who I'm talking? Did I just lose you? Or are you still around right now? Oh shit! Well, I don't yeah, I know the movie, but Wendy Peppercorn. I don't know Wendy Peppercorn. <laughs> <laughs> she was the hot lifeguard. They gave the guy mouth to mouth. All right, I can see the guy getting mouth to mouth. That's yeah. cool. I, remember. I can't remember the hot lifeguard, but I remember the guy getting mouth to mouth. No, yeah, it was the girl giving the guy mouth to mouth. Got it. Got it. And then he winks. Yeah, then he winks. Yeah. True. Yeah, I think his name was Winks. I think that was, was that his the name. guy that looked like Sam. Like killed like Sam. Looked like Sam. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, let's talk uh, post high school. What, what were your uh, ambitions uh, once you graduated high school? Did you know what you wanted to do? Yeah, I was going to be an industrial arts teacher. Oh, okay. So you yeah. went? Where'd you go to school originally? At uh, at a high school. University of Maine, Portland, Gorham. Which is now USM. USM. Okay. So you were, Maine. you yeah. were husky. And uh, how long did you do that before you changed your mind and got into one a, semester? Yeah. I had. Uh, what exactly was that? The original ambition, industrial arts teacher. You said. Yeah. What is that? Well, that's right. You, know, you guys never had that. Shop teacher? Shop teacher. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, you know, when we were in high school, they, they wouldn't let you take a... If you were a college prep student, you, didn't, you couldn't take any industrial arts courses or any business courses. So if you were a, a, a college prep, it was college prep courses. I never even had a shop course. Yeah. But anyway. Just, hey, Charles. That so wasn't challenged. They, we used to have a shop in middle school. Was, you, was shop there when you were going through? Definitely was. I made some... Uh, <laughs> Killer popsicle stick bird houses. <laughs> These cool little key tags made of plastic. Yeah. But yeah. We did those the, too. Who's the teacher? Jean LeBlanc. Oh, oh, yeah, he's a, he's a pretty good guy. Um, I think he may have been the only shop teacher that I had. Yeah, it was a good class. No uh, no handyman skills in this fine body I got going on. <laughs> See, Chuck Richards is our industrial artist. <laughs> And then George Pula was at the high school. Oh, Chuck yeah. Richards, Chuck the Richards. game warden? Or yeah. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they had a whole shop, like the uh, that little center they had, that little building in the back. That used to be the shop. I mean, they had every tool you known a man in there. It was a, it was a nice center. shop. Chippy Center, yeah. Chippy Center. That was the industrial arts uh, yeah, education place. Yeah, I remember that. Then they had drafting classes where the, they got the gym now, uh, the uh, weight room and stuff. Yeah. They used to be drafting. They, they had all kinds of nice courses. They taught you life skills. Yeah. Why did you give up after your first semester or first year at USM? I just didn't like it. I, didn't, I wasn't challenged. Um, basketball was fun. Played down there. Uh, you didn't walk onto the team. Everybody there was recruited. So uh, after the the tryouts, uh, they kept some of us and they formed like a, a JV league, mm -hmm. a JV team. So we we started playing some some teams from around uh, inner city uh, teams from Boston. You used to come up and play with us. Uh, so did that, and then at the end of the semester. Uh, went back for this, the next semester 
and they they were done with that so they were going to take two of us and bring us up to varsity uh so it was myself and a guy from booth bay harbor bill gallahan um and anyway i decided to leave so huh? transferred uh i was going to transfer to maine for engineering but um you can't start mid if you're an engineering student you can't start mid-season it's like you, all your classes build on each other so you can't have uh, road building two until you have road building one so i can't I transferred to umfk and did some uh whole semester there did my uh prerequisites englishes and maths and things like that true so while you were living down say like to call memmer barwick would you use the phone or would you actually like go ahead and like send letters every week or i didn't no? call you didn't call no i was your i was a i was a kid starting nose kid like you guys bullshit <laughs> <laughs> so like, you just took off and when like how long of a time spent before you like talk to your parents um when i came home come home at uh at christmas time Came over Thanksgiving and came back at Christmas time. Hmm. How did you get back? Was it like a bus or did you train? Oh, no, man. Train, we <laughs> Oregon <laughs> Trail, like you know, my covered wagon. Ray, Ray Pelletier. <laughs> yeah. His brother owned a, uh, a, a 1969 T-Bird convertible. <laughs> and we had that for the first semester. So when we went down to school, nice. we packed that in and we had one tape. And back then it's eight tracks, right? We had one tape. <laughs> it was Boston. We, we were listening to that all the way down. More there. than a feeling, I'm guessing. More than a feeling. <laughs> was, yeah. So you remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So you must have been a big man on campus with that car cruising around. Uh, Not really, no. Oh? Yeah. Long freshman. hair and smoking. You're a freshman. Come on. You're a freshman. Huh? Yeah. So you go to UMaine and uh, you get right into engineering at that, that point? Yeah. Or, yeah, you knew what you wanted to do? Yeah. What was, uh, what was UMaine like back then? Because for us, like, uh, Charles, did you even venture to UMaine to go party? Did you have friends? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lots of partying down there. Yeah. What did they call it? Ushuaires? Uh, Ushuaires, yeah. But there was a lot of house parties, cake parties. Yeah. Bar Plur would actually use an ice auger in the kitchen while we were playing beer die. He turned an ice auger on. He was in a fraternity? A story. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't even a fraternity. There was just a bunch of guys. John Smith, John Misho, J.R. Bushi was down there. Right. Bar Plur, Josh Karen. Yeah. On and on. Me and John Lowe's would go down every year. That was a good time. So, off the story. <laughs> No, Maine was great. We uh, I, when I was at uh, USM, we'd uh, pledge the fraternity, and that same fraternity was at U uh, Maine at Orono. So uh, when we went there, moved right into the house. My sophomore year, when I went to uh, Maine, moved right into the Sigma New House. Sigma New House was directly across from the field house, across the parking lot. You're at the field house. Yeah, uh, freaking awesome. Plus, we had the best weight room on campus. Uh, yeah, it was cool. Sweet. Yeah. And uh, you play in murals, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's some leagues down there, some frat leagues. And then uh, you ran into uh, a current or a future yeah. NBA player, right? I've told you that story before, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the big guy down there at the time, uh, his name was Rufus Harris. You can Google that if you want. Charles, you want, you want to fact, on, fact check? Got it. Rufus Harris. <laughs> Shit, hey, time on. I'm in, uh, I'm in America, and I'm on a Canadian data package. My dad is going to be, um, I'm roaming hard, but I'll, for you guys, I'll do it. <laughs> so Rufus Harris was uh, 6'3". Uh, he was the man on the team. Uh, actually, he had a trial for the Celtics after that season. But um, Rufus... Uh, had a habit of coming down to the field house when they weren't didn't have practices or they were off. Uh, him and the rest of the team guys would just go down and they'd pick up a bunch of us uh, hackers on the sidelines and, and we'd play. Yeah, so Look at him. He's telling the truth. Charles. Oh, we, we, there's also a mug shot of him here. What happened to Rufus? Let's we'll find out. Yeah, I can tell you about it. <laughs> Rufus got in a little bit of trouble after, after yeah. college. Yeah. He, he had a, a falling out. But anyway, Rufus was the guy to beat. And there, there was another, other, ooh, another guy uh, on the team that year, his, his senior year, his name was Rick Carlisle. Yep. Uh, Rick Carlisle then transferred to Virginia. Virginia. Played with Ralph Sampson. Yeah. And anyway, and then got on with the Celtics, and then that, that was his in. But yeah. we played in the field house a couple of times. Yeah. So it was uh, Rufus Harris with four of us uh, snotty nosed kids uh, would take on the rest of the. The UMO team yeah. and beat him. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. And you know, Rufus is like, just, he'd set us up. Yeah. They'd double team him, he'd just drop it into you and you'd score. Yeah. But I remember uh, Rick Carlisle wasn't a, a bum, but there's another guy, I think his last name was Mercer. Oh, Peckerhead. Oh, yeah. I hated that kid. Yeah. I like guarding him and 
<laughs> anyway, those are the guys you like to drop to the floor. So. Yeah. Yeah. Little insert in 2016, Rufus Harris was arrested after he danced in the middle of a busy intersection early Tuesday morning. 2016? Yeah. So He's still in trouble, ago. huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was yelling for no lawful purpose. Um, and then he said, take me to effing jail. He allegedly said, I have effing work tomorrow. So there's your buddy Rufus still at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Rick Carl, on the other hand, uh, won an NBA championship in 2011, coaching the Dallas Mavericks, and he's still the coach for the Dallas yeah. Mavericks. Uh, Google it, the 1979 or 1980, Rufus Harris, University of Maine. They beat a, a top 10 team that year. He was the real deal. I'm trying to think of who it was. DePaul, maybe? Was it when DePaul came to town? DePaul. God, I got a great fucking you do memory. Well, but Unbelievable. Maybe. <laughs> also, yeah. r random, random story real quick. Dr. J came and played at UMaine once upon a time when he was at UMass, guys. It's a huge deal that happened in the pit. Go look it up. Those games are great, too. You go yeah. see the UMaine games back then? It was at the pit? Yeah. Friggin' awesome game. Were they good? Were they ever good? UMaine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That year, that Rufus Harris year, they were awesome. Yeah. All right. So, UMaine experience was a good experience. And then yeah. you graduated. Or actually, didn't you come back to Fort Kent at some point? Did you do yeah, a semester? No, I graduated from there. And then I went to work for Chimbro Corp for. I thought three you were. Years. I thought you had some bangle in you. I thought you had. Some, I thought you came to UFK for like a semester or some shit. I um, I got about a year's worth of forestry courses under under me. All right. While I was when I was back here, I took some courses. Uh, yeah, but then again, that too. Uh, Great Northern was closing up. There weren't any jobs in the woods. So I didn't. I didn't finish it. He's a, not even a bangle like the rest of us, Charles. Uh, no, I was just thinking you should go back to school and get that degree. That next year we'll be <laughs> celebrating its graduation for the UFK grads yeah. right now. So. Get back become to school, then. Become a forester. There's a couple movies like that. Ernest goes to school. Ernest <laughs> goes to jail. You guys, you, you can do it, Dad. Go play for uh, Bengals when he is B. 40 Martin years old. Martin played at 40, so yeah. you can be the next Bengal <laughs> yeah, to play yeah, at yeah. 60 next year. Yeah. Do it. That's an eight. You, those teams are you, big, uh, like Rusty Neto and, and those guys. That's your era. Uh, their dad, Reg, uh, who, you know, we played against each other in Hack League for years and years, but uh, their dad was on that team. So I, I still remember all these, you know, the full bench of the, the, all the black guys, and then there was two token white guys at the end of the bench. It was Reg and Alton Martin. Oh, um, nice. So Alton and Reg were, were there. Where's yeah. this at Fort Kent? Yeah. Yeah, at UMFK. Those years, I'm telling you, when they were really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those other years, they were good too, but just those, those particular years, they were fun to watch. So we're going to touch on um, Hack League here in a little bit, but let's get, let's get back to the life story here. So you leave UMaine, go work for Chimbro. Yeah. And uh, where did it take you from there? When did you come back home? When did you, when'd you uh, make the pilgrimage back? 83. When were you born? 83. Yeah. And then Charles came into this world. There yeah. you go. <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> Been stuck here ever since. Yeah. 82 Good guy. Slowing it down. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, did some construction for a little bit. Started your own business, right? Did that for 10 years, yep. Joey Barden Sons. Yep. I think we still have a hat around here somewhere. We do. And the hats uh, and all kinds of memorabilia. What you should have done is whenever you sold the business and you had the Quonset up there in Soldier Pond, you should have turned it into a gym just like uh, Washburn. Yeah. Should have kept it. It was originally Joey Bard and Sons when you had Tom and myself, and then it turned into. No, no, then I think it went to Joey Bard and what the fuck? We had Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True story. That's when they sold the business. He got out at that point. <laughs> gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go. And then, uh, yeah, so sold the business and then uh, got a job at the hospital. Yeah. Been there ever since. That was a, that was a good story, though, in the business. Uh, when we were uh, doing the garage out back here and had the guys hauling gravel in, right? And uh, the guys were all done for the day and they were, they were headed out and I came up the hill. Well, Sam and Tom, I think you guys were down in the plane on the, in the dirt. Yeah. And Terry Pinette pulls in with it. Uh, he's leaving in... Sam stop, waves him. It was Sam that did it, right? Sam uh, waves him down. It was either him. It was one of us. But. Yeah. Sam waves him down and, and says, Hey, my dad told me to tell you to bring back another load of that nice green gravel. We need a, we need a oh, pile hey. back here. So he went back, got one, so these guys could take their little bulldozers and payloaders. That's and hilarious. <laughs> I never heard of that one. Yeah, yeah, true story. That was classic. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, hope we don't get, I hope we didn't get Terry fired for that. <laughs> but... Good stuff. Yeah, me and Sam were uh, were dirt boys. We were we were supposed to inherit the business and be freaking digging holes and trenches right now, but instead, I'm doing my thing and Sam's doing. What, what, what does Sam do? He's what? doing his hair. <laughs> Probably doing his hair somewhere. <laughs> Sam's parking cars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. 
Let's get into Hack League here. This is what I wanted to talk about because so, you've been around probably since like day one, since the original Hack League. For those guys that don't know, Hack League is just pickup ball, but um, it's called Hack League because you guys hack, you guys play dirty. So earliest recollection from uh, – actually, I want to go back real quick. Let's do a quick rapid fire, Charles, from the Joey Barton Sundays because I think we both have fond memories from when Dad had the business, all right? So we'll just do a quick a couple rapid fire questions. What's your uh, your favorite project you did when you had the business? What was like your your most proud job you had? Uh, housing project back at the hospital. Okay. That's a good one. Favorite piece of machinery to drive? Excavator. Um, what was your uh, mindset when you go to auctions and try to bid on a piece of equipment? Did you go in there with a game plan, or did you have your, your mindset on something, or did you just go look around and kind of window shop? Go look around. I was looking for smalls, because the other guys there weren't shopping for smalls. They were shopping for big stuff, yeah. so the small stuff went cheap. What was the biggest fail, the biggest oops, that just happened moment? The biggest oops? Yeah. While in business? Yeah. Uh, falling off the back of a trailer with a bulldozer. And it's, a, it's it a good one. And rolling it over. <laughs> How about uh, taking out power lines on Main Street? I don't think you were responsible for that, but... No, I don't remember doing that. No, didn't. No, okay. I thought no. somebody did that. I don't know. All right. It's a championship game. You need a bulldoze driver, a dump truck driver, someone to run your excavator, and someone to load the trucks and the payload. Or who are you picking for those uh, five spots right there? The guys that used to work for me? Yeah. Who, who's your dump truck driver? Ron Panette. All right. How about uh, in the excavator who's digging your holes? Armin Panette. All right. Bulldozer? Alan Bullion. All right. Um, what I miss? Excavator? Did I say excavator? Yeah, yeah, excavator. Backo? Armin again. Steamroller? Anybody who can walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, flagging? Flagging? Yeah. Um, Aunt Eva, didn't she do it for a little bit on no, one of your projects on Main Street? I don't remember. Yeah, no. I have a weird memory. Charles, you got any last questions? No, I think that wraps it up. That was a good uh, construction segment right there. Let's get the Hack League. <laughs> excited for this one. Yeah. So you go back to the mid-70s uh, in terms of your recollection of the Hack League, and you mentioned some of the guys. When did it start getting good? You said the 80s? Yeah, we, I mean, we had ref, referees, and it was it was a good competition. Yeah, so yeah. was it just four can, or was it uh, like four Canada team, Mattawas got a team, was it one of those yeah. leagues, or yeah. was it all local? Yeah, so, uh, Allagash had a team, Mattawas got a team, uh, Fort Kent had three teams. Yeah, it was five or six games, five, five or six teams in the league. We had uh, uniforms, we had referees. Where were you guys playing? Where were the games at? Uh, high school. Nice. Actually, then we have some grainy footage of that from back in the day. You guys had some yeah, very. Yeah, somewhere you had some. I think it's on the Bard mixtape. If you go on my YouTube channel, I have a Bard family mixtape. True. Go check it out. Um, first, uh, you say you didn't really see Tom Pelletier play in high school. What was your first Tom Pelletier men's league experience like? What? Really, really, I don't remember playing Tom. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember, and he was he was he played soccer. Once he left, he played soccer. He didn't play basketball. Yeah. I think he played in the Caribou leagues after after he. Got out of college, came back, and he was practicing uh, law. He was working in Caribou, and I think that's the league he was in. It was a basketball league up there, so we never really. So who was good? Who, who was like the the best guy in the league at that point? Down here? Yeah, like the one you were talking John about. John Libby. John, I don't know the name. John, you know John Libby? Yeah, he was old, older. Oh man, I, and I'd like to know. You know. He, I'm foggy as far as how old he must have been, but he was probably in his 50s back then, and he was friggin' tough, man. He played. He must have played for Umpy. I think he was an owl. Uh, originally from, uh, actually used to be neighbors to us, the house next door to us, and then they moved to Madawaska. It's the story I heard. He was a lot older than I, so I didn't remember that part of it. Yeah. But uh, he played for Madawaska, I think, and then so he was in the Madawaska team. But that guy was friggin' tough, man. Yeah. In his 50s, and he was running. He was. Kind Drilling three point, it was in all three pointers back then. But his shots were way outside. Yeah, he could drive to the hole. He rebounded. He was like, he was awesome. I think he passed away like not much longer after the, like his basketball career expired. Am I right? Oh no, no, he was. He's, I, he may still be alive. I really yeah, I don't know. He had a heart attack. He did. He had a heart condition. He oh, was, so he had he a heart was playing. attack. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, that's I mean, he was. Sm he smoked like. <laughs> he smoked like crazy. He'd be in between games or halftime. He'd go out and smoke cigarettes yeah. and come back in and play some more. He was tough as nails. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that was Dana, uh, Dana Jardin, 
was the little point guard for for Madawaska, Big Reginetto, uh, uh, Fats. Fats. Yeah. Fats the Shane. Fats yeah. the Shane. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Fats Fats Cooper. Johnny. Don't forget the Cooper. Uh, that's right. Yeah, Will Cooper. Will. All kinds of legends. So, who were uh, some of the guys in your team from uh, from Fort Kent? And I'm guessing <clears throat> we'll get to the Allagash team too. I'm guessing Allagash had some ballers too. But who were some of the guys you were playing with? And before you answer that, like, how did you divide up your Fort Kent team? It, you just you, somebody asked you to play on their team. Bob Bob uh, Plord was our did ours. Robert Plord, like yep. Robert, our coach. Yeah, All right, nice. So he's on a formed our team. So we had Robert, uh, Bob, and myself. Uh, Stevie Peril, favorite guard ever, Stevie. <laughs> Love that guy. Um, Stevie. That, that comes up a lot. Everyone loves Stevie. Charles, actually, we'll, I'll talk to you about Stevie afterwards. Yeah. We'll go, go ahead. I'm, I'm drawing <clears throat> blanks. Help me out, Charles. On your team? Yeah. Probably Mark Graham was on your team. Grammar was on the team. Oh, here's the legend. Shoot the lights out. I got a good one for you, Paul Cancellar. It's coming through. Tim Dope. Tim Dope. Tim Dope. Um, Paul Cancellar. Am I right? Is there Scott? Mike Bouchard. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> uh, uh, Scott that owns Thibodeau's Insurance. Scott Kent. Scott Kent. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys had like teal jerseys. It's all coming back. I'm having the, yeah. I walked down memory lane here. What about the Gash? Who was from the Gash? Uh, Gash had uh, Kelly O'Leary. Yeah. Um, Stacy and Wade Kelly. Uh, Cecil Hafford. Cecil. <laughs> and then Murph was the. The co I mean, he's the one. He was the, the star of the team. So Murph was on that team. Big Buddy Don Gardner. Murray, Buddy Gardner. Buddy. He Buddy. was good. Yeah, I like that guy. All those guys were great. Yeah. So that's what kind of sucks with the, the league because it's not a hack league. Hack league is nice because you, you go, you play with different guys every time you go. You know, any any given Sunday you could be on one team one time and then on another team. So you get to play with all the guys. So there's not a lot of competition. It's not as competitive as it is when you have a league. Yeah. You know. Um, how many games in the league? Play every team once, games. twice, maybe. Yeah, once or twice, twice probably. Yeah, yeah. So 10, pretty, twelve games. Things like things get pretty heated. I'm guessing. Not really. They had refs. Yeah. Yeah. Is Uncle Bob refing these yeah. things. Yeah. Charles, you want, you want to say anything? I don't know. I remember seeing some pretty big brawls. Maybe not really? many of them, but I don't remember, I remember Steve Perro, Dan Dejardin get into it a few oh, times. Steve, <laughs> Steve Both those guys are competitors, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's just that was every day. It didn't matter if it was there or at Hackley goes. Yeah. yeah. Stevie had a little bit of a short fuse, but great guard, great guard. Yeah. Let's talk about Stevie real quick. So, Dad, you say that's probably your favorite guard you ever played with right there. That seems to be the consensus amongst everyone. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> Charles, you had the uh, unfortunate pleasure of having to guard him when you went to go play on Sundays. Did you dislike him? Or? It was a funny, it was a, it was a love-hate <laughs> relationship. I loved... Uh, but you guys are forgetting, when you guys are playing, we're not in our prime anymore. Yeah. Oh man, that was like, what am I, 35? This was probably like 15 years ago. Steve, you're probably 67 now, I'm sure you probably, <laughs> Steve's probably about 45 right now. Probably. So you've been 30. That's your prime. Mm. That's 45 is a rough estimate. He's probably, I don't even think he's that old. Well. Is he older than Lon? I don't know why. Yeah, he's older than Lon. Yeah. I was in my 40s. Yeah, but you're the rare, you're, you're rare though. You're still playing almost 60. Yeah, I'm not playing anymore. They're letting me. They're letting me running up and down with them. Yeah. It's nice of them, but I'm not playing anymore. No, it was fun to garden them, man. It was just it was an honor to see him go deep. And actually, it was funny because we'd always like party Saturday night and both show up to the gym hungover on Sunday morning. And <laughs> uh, all right, Steve, how many you gonna <laughs> light me up for tonight? And, yeah. Hey, but sometimes I get him, he get me, and we went back and forth. It was pretty fun. Just great because a, a guard for a guard, <clears throat> he understood. He never hit me with that. I'm not, not a post up player. Never been a post up player. I always played the four. I never was a post up player. So he never hit you with a pass. And, uh, when you wouldn't post up to get a pass from him, you'd slash, uh, pick and roll, and he always read you. Uh, and you know, or, or he, he'd hit you. Defense collapse on you, and he'd just be sitting up there in that three point line. And yeah. Toss it back out, and, poof, yeah. and he hit every time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, easy to play. Coop's, like a Coop, Coop's a great guard, too. I love playing with Coop. Yeah. Coop, great general out there, too. Yeah. Dan Shasty was a good guard, too. Yeah, we talk about Dan Shasty. Yeah. Well, well, we'll get to like the mid-90s here okay. in, in a little bit. I think that's, that's the golden age. But um, what was I going to say here? Back to, uh, yeah, so when did actually, like, when did, like, Hackley, like, when did Sunday morning Hackley get the high school start? Because we talk about the league, but, like, when did actually, like, Hackley... Has that always I mean, been I, there? I opened it up for 15 years uh, before me. 
I'm not sure. I mean, you had, uh, I'm not sure. We used to open it up. I'm sure it was one of the teachers. You so you would have started open opening it up when, like, early 90s, maybe? When you guys were young. I mean, uh, yeah. 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 And that was the uh, the routine. Go to church and then go to uh, the high school. And uh, I think, Charles, we witnessed the golden age of Hack League. Let's just start rattling off names. So you mentioned Dan Shasty, Burt Bushy, Stevie Perro, Paul Cancellarich. Paul Cancellarich played on our team. Yeah. Well, who else am I missing here? Well, I like Demar Graham. Uh, Mike Bouchard was in there. Terry Rio. Oh, Terry. Larry Murphy. Travis Delisle. Yeah. My Delisle occasionally. Don Murray. Don, Don Murray. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Pete Martin. Doug Levac. Roy Michaud. Holy shit. Yeah, it was the old hackers. I tell you, but it was, it, was, uh, it was still a gentleman's league. I mean, you called your own. That was it. It didn't get... You know who changed hack league the most? Like uh, guys like Travis Little and, and, and Cooper. Because you're never going to win a, an argument with, with Cooper or Travis, yeah. right? So that's when uh, the hacking started. If, you know, uh, Travis. No, hit. that's when your hacking started, then. <laughs> Pretty much. But that's the rules of the, the, the game, right? If somebody came in and, and, and friggin' nailed you with the thing, pushed you out almost, boom, the hammer came down. That was it. Because there's no sense trying to call an offensive foul on the guy because you're never going to get that call yeah. with Coop, right? Or, or with Travis. So the hammer came down. And it's, it's kind of how it started. Because it didn't used to be like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But Uncle Roll and Uncle Rocky used to go play basketball. Yeah, didn't you guys go play in Wallygrass? I remember like Uncle Rocky playing in Wallygrass. Oh, yeah. Uncle Roll showed up in his friggin' steel toed work boots. And <laughs> he always wanted to guard me. So, <laughs> <laughs> lucky me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I remember Rocky breaking his finger in Wallace Grass. Remember that? Yeah. Drive to the too. hospital real fast. Yeah. Two, I think it was two fingers. Uh, both sideways. They're both yeah. 90 degrees. Yeah, he's pinky in his next one. Yeah. Yeah. Charles, weren't you trying to take charges in a pack league? See, we used, to, we used to get those calls. When I started playing, you could get a, a, a charge call. True. Yeah, I think you. I probably drew a few. You know over, what I'm saying? Over the years, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That was, that okay, was go to Hack League now and try to get a charge call. Oh yeah. I, or or go, go to the go to the college. I mean, you guys don't even. No. Yeah, you don't want to get laughed off the, the, the. But that was part of the game. Yeah. Oh. Wow. My uh, my career would have been non-existent if I couldn't. That's what your game was built on, right there. Yeah, Everything yeah. was built off. No look passes and taking charges. <laughs> That's all I did. And the occasional. Three pointer, usually to win a game. That was it. <laughs> Two for eight every game. Yeah. All right, it's uh, time to get to um, our first segment. Still looking for a sponsorship. Our buddy Ethan Raymond, co executive producer with Charles. All right, are you guys okay with being co executive producers, or is it a bit of a competition thing going on? Uh, I don't know how much he's actually brought to the table. I know <laughs> he likes this segment, but it's, we, we need to start polling the audience because. Uh, Co-executive producer. As long as my name's first on the poster, it's good. C comes before E, so you get you get credits first. So true. Ethan. Well, according to his woman, E comes comes before all. <laughs> Take a second, let that let that sink in. I got it. I got it first time. But <laughs> did I say girlfriend from my wife? Well, either way, it's good. <laughs> Ethan asks on big time. <laughs> On today's edition of Ethan Asks Big Time Questions, we got a fucking forkent legend, one of my favorite people, Joey Bard in the building. Joey, I gotta ask, you've dominated Hack League for many, many years, um, playing pickup ball with your sons and all their friends, myself included, um, pretty much making all us young bloods feel like pussies out there. How does it feel to have been dominant for so long and having such a good run? And uh, part B of this question is, after having three sons and a very athletic daughter as well, how does it feel to still be the most athletic bard? <laughs> That's got to feel pretty fucking good. Oh, man, I am so proud of my kids. You have no idea. I still have my, my, my moments of each of them. I remember their careers better than mine. Um, Charlie's uh, biggest and this is probably not something you'd remember most, but championship game at the, uh, I think I've, I'll tell you this before, UMFK, right? And you guys are up by one goal, and it's, the game's almost done, and you got beat. You, you were too far up. You were up around half mid midfield, and the guy was going to blow by you. And you kind of just, 
you, 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 got, you, you were quick enough to get in front of him, and then you grabbed his jersey, and you dragged him down to the ground. So you got a yellow card out of it, but it would have been an open goal. That guy would have scored for sure. Uh, that's my, your shining moment in my head. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And Tom, press Kyle. Yep. And you were shooting threes. Oh, and I, I thought you guys won that game, and you, you reminded me, and you said, no, we lost that we game. We lost. Yeah. But, but when the coach of the other team comes up to me, and I, I know those guys from, from the high school days, yeah. uh, comes up to me and says, you know, I'd have your son playing for me anytime, anywhere. He'd be starting for me any, any, any team I've ever had. Yeah. That's you. Ah, oh, shit. And then Sammy Bard, Matawaska. Yeah. Well, Matawaska... How do you, uh, anytime you beat Matawaska, and then what, Sammy had been out, he'd been broken leg, was that the year? Broken ankle, we know, we know where he gets it from now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and uh, that was his first game back, and it was home game against Matawaska. Mm. He was friggin' unconscious, man, mm. and nobody was even touching him. Uh, and I mean, he's the, he won that game. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you got Uncle Roland in the stands, still working at Frazier's, and that's bragging rights for him at Frazier's the next yeah. day for a long time True. after that. <laughs> so that's my proud moment there. And then also him going down to uh, McDonald's, the all McDonald's. I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah, that's cool. So those two things. And then Emily uh, isn't basketball. Emily is uh, softball. Yeah, flamethrower. Man, oh man, she could pitch. Yeah. Uh, but to see her come up, because she was not always the pitcher that she was when she ended, mm -hmm. but to stay with it, right? All those losses and all those disappointments. Yeah. Uh, seventh grade, eighth grade, nobody else wanted to pitch. She kept out of it, and then all of a sudden, that switch turned. Yeah. And then starting to see her throw those fastballs, I mean, I, get, I am proud of each and every one of you for different, uh, all of you anyway, but those are the proud moments that come to mind, more so than mine uh, at the moment. But yeah, no, you guys are all great. Great, great question, Ethan. All right, uh, another uh, round of uh, Ethan Ass Big Time questions on this Big Time episode of Big Time. Ethan, go ahead and take it away, bud. Who would be your all-time starting five for Fork and Warriors basketball? You can pick from any era, any year. Um, yeah, just t take me through who your starting five would be. At guard, definitely uh, Stevie Perro at the one, at one guard. Every time, Stevie Perro. Every time. Um, Probably Ryan at the other. Oh, no. What am I talking about? Lon, I put Ryan at the three. Okay. Um, and then down low, a big man. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. He played. He's from Eagle Lake. He played that era. Chad Bunny? No. Yeah, it's not Brad Courier. Chad Tardy? Speedster? He Check. played. He played oh. with uh, the same time as uh, Travis DeLille. Oh, uh, it's before my oh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get this thing here. Carrie Micho. Yes. <laughs> and he would be the big man. He'd be the big guy down low. And yourself? And me. Yeah. All right, there you go. Sure. Charles, how, how are you going to beat that five? Who do you got? Replace them all with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I beat them all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Um. Let's let's talk something else. Alumni games. How, how long have you been doing alumni games for? You go you go way back with these alumni games. Yeah, seventy seven probably. Seventy seven, and I remember your last dunk was at an alumni game. It might have been when Charlie was playing. I remember how old you were the last time you dunked? Last time I dunked. You were your thirty seven years 37, old. Last time I dunked at six foot two. And you said that was my, I was playing. Yeah, I want to say. 30 no, I was uh, I was I was coaching. Lawn. Lawn. Berthium. Uh, Murph couldn't couldn't coach me in the summertime, so uh, uh, Murph asked me to just you know he said you don't have to I said well, I don't know what the hell am I going to do with them he said don't worry about it they'll tell you what <laughs> they'll show you what you need to do yeah. right so we we play at the college and I started playing with them uh, what was Tom Willett's son's name Randy Randy right. Willett that kid could jump through the roof yeah so he was egging me on uh, and. I just didn't pr at the college we were playing at the college that day, day I think it just went up and I, I put one down and he kind of was uh -huh. hey, you're kind of old to be doing that <laughs> yeah. but anyway yeah yeah I'm glad you brought up the story because I, I did uh, Jason Neto's episode last night and I said Jason I have a random memory of dad coaching you guys I want to say it was in Caribou at the Armory or some random shit like that he mm -hmm. couldn't recollect but so that did happen I wasn't NMCC. I wasn't making this the NMCC tournament NMCC. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, but I, uh, Lon was playing, and then somehow Lon 
want to come out. So Juan came out. He t- I mean, he was running the show. Juan was running the show. He, says, he took me out. I took him out, and Robbie McBride went in. And Robbie was freaking tenacious on defense. So all of a sudden, I mean, it was a close game, and Robbie went in. Steal, 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 lay up, lay up, lay up, yeah. like that. And then and after a while, I asked Lon, you want to go back? No, I'm all set. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing great. Leave him alone. Yeah. But yeah, Lon I think was, it's messed up. I remember this whole situation because it was probably my first time eating Burger King after the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fat kid in me coming out. I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. That's why I remember that trip like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That was a good, and J- so Jason was part of that. Yeah, I think Jason. Jason was part. Derek Brian, Bridey. Derek, yeah, I remember Brad Courier. Brad Courier, yeah, he was the big was guy. And then Ray, I remember. I don't remember Lon. Who's this Lon guy you guys yeah. keep talking about? <laughs> I, was at, I was asking <laughs> Harvey. Is that, that Tyler and Aaron's brother? I think so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So Corey and Ryan must have been part of that too. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, random memories. What else did you do for coaching? I remember you coached my rec teams. Was that your earliest coaching gig? Was the whole uh, the story? Yeah, the right? Yeah. We used to do the Pee Wees with you guys. Uh, oh, yeah, Pee Wee basketball. Pee-wee, yeah, you guys started in kindergarten. Charlie, that's, you were the first one. And you went all the way through, started kindergarten. That's, all, that's also on the Bard family mixtape on YouTube. Go check that out. We got Joey Bard in his tight jeans and tucked in t shirt. <laughs> and the stash. You want to ask him about the stash at all, real quick? Do you want to? Oh, it was a popular 80s trend with <laughs> most porn stars. So, uh, Joe Bard uh, was uh, rocking that probably. Where, um, yeah, who influenced you to get the mustache or? That's just what you do, man. When you're, yeah. when you're, uh, when you're a young That's kid. That's not what I do, Dad. I, I never did that. When, when, you're a, <laughs> when you're a young kid, you want to look old. And when you get old, you want to look young. So True. Yeah. Charles, huh? when you grow the stash, Charles? <laughs> Can you even grow a stash? Well, as you see, I'm getting old, but I still look young, and I can't grow a stash. <laughs> So yeah, we'll just leave the old hairy chest. So we'll, let the, we'll let the hair, we'll let the chest hair sprout. <laughs> So you coach Pee Wee basketball. You had the random uh, mid nineties experience coaching uh, probably some of the best teams ever from Fort Kent. And the JV, they needed a JV coach for when you were going through. So yeah, so you did some assistant coaching, and and then Tim came in. So that was it. That's when I got out. Yeah. Yeah, and they haven't coached since. Not going back. I coached um, Emmy in eighth grade. I think I coached eighth grade. And that was the last time I coached. Yeah. Get this, and I'm not going to name names, but uh, a championship game. Uh, we're up by like two, three points. A few minutes left in the game. And I, I talked to all my girls ahead of time. I said, you know, I've been all season. We, we've been, I've been playing everybody. We've all had playing time. But this is the championship game. And we're going to go to win this game. So if you don't get the playing time that you used to get, uh, this is why. And I said, do you all understand that? And they all said, yeah, no, we want to win this game. So I was playing, you know, the start, the, the best girls better than anybody else. And all of a sudden, a few minutes left in the game, we're up, we must have been up by five or so. Uh, the, the ref of the game comes up to me and says, the principal just said that you have to play all your girls. Oh. And, and all the girls in back of me hear the ref tell me that. Yeah. That was the last time I, I, I ever coached. Yeah. Wow. Well, that, 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 anyway. Yeah. yeah. You hear that, Charles? Charles? Do they do it in Canada or what? Well, <laughs> thankful for that rule, Sam got playing time that year. So. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Let's get to uh, another round of Ethan Ass. Big time questions on Big Time the Podcast. Let's, uh, let's see what you got here, Ethan. So we had a conversation once about how you were a senior and you were 18 at the time that Uh, The drinking age went from 21 back to 18, and you were able to ditch out of study hall and head over to BJ's and grab a quick beer or a shot of Joe Corvo or something like that. Um, Also, I heard that it was pretty wild in Fort Kent back in the day with, uh, they had like the most bars per square mile or some shit like that, and I think they had Arcadia and like Fort Kent Hotel and uh, some of those hot spots back in the day, so... uh, for us young bloods that never got to experience all that, what, what was life like back then? And uh, yeah, you must have some pretty crazy stories. Great question, Ethan. Is it appropriate, though? Well, I mean, that's up for you to decide. You can keep it as appropriate as you want. Yeah, we had, I mean, your dad had a bit of a drinking problem in high school, so uh, we used to have a good time. We used to have a good time. Was it a drinking problem or was it the norm at the time? 
It's more the norm, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what's the problem with 12 pack a day? Because it doesn't seem like a problem. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to disrespect my coaches. Yeah. Because uh, I've, I've uh, like, Sam Jordan was our coach, and I, I respect that guy. I, to this day, go play a game. Like last week, we're playing a, a high school game, right? And I'm dragging my, I'm getting old. I can't, I, I just can't do what I used to be able to do, right? So the guys are, are running back, uh, you know. Missed shot, and they're beating me back up the floor on defense. Nobody's ever beat me back on defense. Woogie never used to beat me back on defense. <laughs> yeah. And Woogie's fast. I mean, that was Woogie's thing, right? Yeah. And he did, up to last time I played with Woogie, he didn't beat me back. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and, and I got Sam Jordan's voice in the back of my head saying, "You, if you're gonna rest, you rest on offense. You don't rest on defense." Sure. Okay, how, how long ago was that? That's 1976, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's still in the back of my head. True. Yeah. So that man uh, has left a lasting impression, I'd say, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think he would be disappointed if he knew that uh, we had uh, not uh, lived up to his standard back in the day. So True. Hey, Charles, which coach has that effect on you today? Which coach, his voice is still in your head? I'm going Dave Minzy. He gave <laughs> one piece of advice on defense. You run straight line to that goal post. You'll beat anybody to that near post, straight line. Dave Minzy. It was successful. And you still remember that to this day. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. We're going to get Dave Minzy on the podcast at some yeah, point. Legendary. Yeah. 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 Let's get to uh, another round of Ethan Ass. Big time questions on Big Time the Podcast. Last question here for you, Joe. Hey, it's been an honor getting to know you over these uh, these last 31 years or so that I've been alive. Known you for a long time. Uh, we're going to have to have some Joe Cordovo shots here next time I see you. Um, Got to know, how do you really feel about Sam's hair? <laughs> I know I, I kind of have a similar hairstyle, but I'm not really your problem. And I guess Sam kind of is. So do you have to answer a lot of questions about it back home, or are you envious at all, or are you just kind of flat out embarrassed? <laughs> well, Lee, it's, uh, it's kind of like this. I worried about him a long time until I start, started seeing the girls he started bringing home. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's doing fine. I think he's good. Charles, do you have anything to say about Sam's hair? You want to... I've known Sam for 30 years, and I've never seen him bring a girl home. So. <laughs> I don't know what Dad's seeing, but I don't know. <laughs> Great question. Um, shit, Charles, are we going to get to Charlito Wonders here or what? Oh, off did the you, cuff, Charlie. Did you, even, you want to think about it? I'm prepared for any, but... Uh, you got something? Give me, uh, give me 30 seconds to think about it. All right, so what we'll do before we get to Charlito Wonders is we'll get to uh, our serious segment. We don't have a name for it. We don't have a sponsor yet, but um, it's called When You Die. It sounds serious right there. When You Die, what jersey do you want to be buried in? So you got a you got a couple different ones you can choose from when you go to the grave. Which one do you uh, do you want in there with you? Number twenty two, Warriors. Warriors high school basketball jersey. That's what you're going with. Yeah. Anything else even come close? Or is it, what about like your old school uh, API tank top men's basketball? No, I'll pass on that. Pass on that. Pass on those. Yeah. There it is. Charles, are we doing this? Or? I think I got one here. All right. So it's time to get to um, our officially sponsored segment. Charlito Wonders, brought to you by Rocks Family Diner, the greatest puts in town by far. Wash that down with a booby pie. Say hello to Pete and Sandra while you're there. Charles. Don't forget the hot dogs. Yeah, hot dogs too. Grilled or uh, steamed buns, it gets no better. Charles, what do we uh, what do we got? Well, I was just kind of wondering if you could go downtown to BJ's, have drinks with one individual tonight. And wake up tomorrow and have that guy playing your basketball team. What would be your best selection? So drink tonight with that guy. Yeah, in the morning, though he'll be reliable, up and at it. So drink a lot tonight. Play hard tomorrow. Who's your go-to guy? Anybody? Anybody? MJ. Whoa! No, 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 MJ. No, 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 no. You don't play the like local legends, MJ. <laughs> go to bat with Stevie. This guy wins every friggin' every time we bring up this question, Stevie Paro gets picked every time. It's true. Steve, when you get on the microphone here. But uh yeah, so you what uh what do you think you guys are gonna do? Like shots, tequila? I don't know, was Steve a tequila kind of guy? I never really drank with uh I think he's a beer kind of guy here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know I, if he I drank. I think he's sober most Sunday mornings or <laughs> yeah. I'd show up and over, Steve was sober. <laughs> See, I was a lot older than those guys and we had young kids at the house, and we didn't go out partying. 
That's going to do it for uh, this week's episode of, of Big Time, the podcast with Joey Bard, the historian of men's pickup basketball in the greater Fort Kent area. Dad, thank you for coming on. Charles, you got anything you want to say real quick? Or? It's a damn shame that we've all sat down here with one drink and the podcast is over and we're still on that same drink. Tom, Dad, there's is empty. I'm still sipping on mine. Just we're slowing gonna, down, Charles. Next time, we gotta, next time we got to bring two to the table. <laughs> So kids do to you. <laughs> Dad, you wanna you have anything you wanna get off your chest before we get up out of here? Now's your chance. You wanna address anything? Any controversies? Any uh, any long standing beefs you wanna smash or none. Uh, basketball has been great for me. Uh, uh, I think that parents miss the uh, the importance of, of letting your kids compete and earning their slots on basketball teams and getting prepared for life. Uh, not everybody uh, gets the same as everybody else. You gotta earn your slots, and that's what basketball should be about and always was about before. Uh, I think you guys uh, were good proof of that too, so I, I don't know, I think, uh, yeah. I've got friends that I still keep in touch with now from when I was a youngster through basketball. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, friends at college I made. I talked to one of my old college friends uh, last year. I hadn't talked to in years, but there's those kinds of connections, and you have them for the rest of your life. They're, 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 they're bonds that you can't make any other way. Um, just uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. It's been awesome for you guys. Sports has been great for this whole family. So. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That might be the best outro we've had so far. No, I was gonna add something. I was gonna like throw one more random question in there, but that was like seal it, wrap it up, wrap that, it up. That's done. <laughs> so thank you for listening to uh, this week's episode of Big Time. Make sure to check out. Uh, you can go back and check out all of season one on uh, iTunes and YouTube, and make sure you check out everything we've got for season two that's out right now. And uh, also go check out the YouTube channel for uh, Big Time Classics. A lot of video content we're putting out there. And also, we're still looking for a friggin' sponsor for Port Ethan. Somebody please step up and give this man some money. That's it. We're out. We'll see you next week.